Hey, Dolomite, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, awesome. Uh, it's great to have, I think you're the first gem that we've uh, ever had on this uh, Impossible Finance uh, uh, AMA and founder interview. So I'm really excited to uh, get uh, you know, more information from you to share to the rest of the Impossible community. Uh, as you guys know, in the Impossible Finance uh, uh, friends, uh, you guys all have been really excited about our most recent launchpad, Ruby Exchange. So uh, we did bring on Dolomite for the show today. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, agreeing to hop on uh, with us. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think the pleasure is all mine, really. Um, I, I feel not only excited, uh, but I feel special that you let a jump, uh, a gem come onto the show. So um, <laughs> thank you for making that exception for me. Yeah. So, you know, I think we can kind of dive right into it. Uh, obviously, people uh, on our uh, launch have already uh, taken a, a quick look at, you know, the website and, and maybe looked at some of the past uh, stuff that you guys have posted on, it, posted on your medium. Um, but I think maybe it'd be helpful to start with maybe uh, a bit about your mi mission and, and vision of uh, what you guys want to build at Ruby. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I think this is a great question. Um, and it's one that we get asked a lot. Um, so uh, this, this is going to be a bit of a longer answer. Um, but I, I think it'll all really come together more towards the end. Uh, to start off, I think our vision ultimately comes down to wanting to take, you know, kind of bits and pieces of the best of everything uh, from projects that have preceded us uh, and, you know, kind of really putting them all under one easy to use umbrella. Um, so, you know, to give some context here, uh, if you think about it, most projects do one thing and they do one thing extremely well. Uh, when you think in you know, terms of DeFi, for example, uh, Curve Finance, you know, when they came out, they really pushed the industry forward with their new stable swap algorithm. Uh, and, you know, if you kind of take that a step further, uh, if you think about Uniswap, they totally broke new ground with the XYK algorithm, right? And I mean, you know, if you think about these two projects, that can kind of sum up uh, for the most part, you know, kind of the innovations, or at least I, I feel like the biggest zero to one leaps our industry has seen, at least in this cycle. Um, so, you know, given that uh, prior to these innovations, the only real options that we had as users, power users, I, I mean, farming wasn't even around back then prior to these guys, um, were you know kind of these centralized exchanges or early order book dexes like uh, ether delta which i'm sure you probably remember right um so then you know on top of that uh this cycle we've seen projects finance avagachi and uh charge particles you know kind of push the envelope a little bit more um you know in terms of what's possible when you mix nfts with DeFi. And that's something that has always been super interesting to us just because, I mean, you know, to be quite frank, it's never been done before. Um, so I think we really want to do all of these things and more. And we want to do it with a focus on giving users a better trading experience. Um, so, I mean, I mean, you know, kind of just to take this a little bit further, uh, we're combining all the best aspects of you know, kind of all of these projects that I just mentioned, uh, and then adding on a little bit more on top as well. Um, so if you think about how we've, you know, kind of designed uh, the entire Ro uh, Ruby exchange protocol um, and its current product offering, uh, as well as the things that are on our roadmap, we have a stable swap with low slippage, right? And this is curve-like. Uh, and then we also have a Uniswap style AMM, which is obviously Uniswap like. Uh, but then the thing that we're doing here is, you know, we don't just have these two things under the same umbrella. We're linking them together in a novel way uh, through our intelligent trade router um, so that, you know, kind of all of these orders get the best execution. And so that's the baseline of our vision. But we just really didn't want to stop there because, you know, looking at the space, taking a look around you um, and just 
I mean, really just being involved in DeFi in general, you can't help but notice all of these really cool innovative things or ideas that are kind of being built upon or at the very least explored, right? Um, so when we first kind of came out of stealth mode, uh, one of the first articles that we actually published was called Hands on the Shoulders of Giants. And in it, we basically laid out our vision for what DeFi not only can, but should be. Uh, and, you know, to kind of sum that up, uh, the major points are it should be cheap or rather gasless because, you know, um, six months ago, gas was crazy on mainnet. Uh, it should be fast. It should be convenient. And it should be accessible to all with a better user experience you know, some of this added gamification through NFTs, which, you know, other than a couple small handful of projects, nobody is really doing. Um, and, and especially not in the context of an AMM. I mean, we are the only people that are, you know, kind of trying to gamify NFTs, financialize NFTs in the context under the umbrella of an AMM. Uh, so, you know, that to us is, you know, one of our guiding principles is to, you know, try to take the best of everything and make it just a little bit better just to push the envelope forward. Um, and so ultimately, um, I think that our goal is to be is to become the dominant AMM on scale uh, and by, you know, kind of the transitive property of being there first and being there better. Uh, a foundational building block of that new scale ecosystem. Um, as you know, I mean, the the stack on the bottom, aka the AMM, that is the foundational crucial layer for DeFi, right? Like if you don't have a fully functioning, uh, well, thought out, well thought out AMM, then you can't build anything else in that ecosystem, really. Um, so it's kind of just a basic tenet of the um, I guess, blockchain itself that you're building on. Uh, and so that that to us is really exciting. That's, you know, what we ultimately always wanted to strive for um, is, you know, solidify ourselves as number one uh, and also, you know, kind of be there um, from day one. And, and also, you know, by by extension, be able to kind of influence the direction of the scale ecosystem. So all that said, <laughs> and I know this is kind of a long-winded answer, uh, but, but I just think it's really helpful to give the context here. Um, I, I think that, you know, not only as builders, but users and participants in the space, uh, our philosophy has always been just this. We love, right? Like if, if you think about it, and, and sorry if I'm like waxing poetic here, but if you think about it, we're really in the midst of, one of the greatest revolutions of our time, maybe that we'll ever see or be able to live through, right? Like all of us here in the space right now are currently sitting at the crossroads of, you know, this really cool thing called DeFi, which is the intersection of tech and finance. And we're watching large amounts of people, you know, normal people, quote unquote normies, uh, wake up to the power of crypto and this blockchain technology and more specifically to decentralized finance. And it for us, it's it's just exciting to be a part of that. I mean, we wake up every day and we just want to build something that will stand the test of time, right? Like smart contracts are immutable. The blockchain is immutable. And, you know, the idea of being able to contribute and to be able to, you know, build something that users will use and love and fall in love with um, that's, that's what keeps us going. Um, I mean, we're building for longevity and we're prioritizing not only the people already in the space who are, you know, maybe more well-versed with DeFi or more familiar with it, uh, but those who are yet to join, right? Like that next generation of people coming up right now that maybe haven't played with crypto or DeFi yet, uh, but they definitely in their lifetime will be doing it.
um, because I think we can all agree uh, that crypto is not going away and DeFi is only going to get better. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of these people. It's still super early. And, um, you know, this revolution uh, has just begun. And, you know, viva la revolution. We want to be a part of it. I love it. I think a, a key part of what you mentioned here is obviously being kind of being best and early on scale. Maybe it's worthwhile for you to share a bit as well about why you guys chose to launch on scale. I know you already mentioned the gas-free uh, user experience, and I wish uh, everything that I used was gas-free. Uh, so I, I definitely see the appeal point of this, but would love to hear more on any of the uh, you know other reasons why you guys chose to build it in this scale ecosystem. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so in short, uh, scale just has amazing tech. Like their tech is really, really good. Um, they've basically taken an approach to blockchain that nobody's been able to do before. Uh, and they're doing this through, you know, kind of this pursuit of a hybrid, modular, elastic uh, scaling solution. And it's, it's just super cool. And I mean, when we looked into it, we were just really impressed. We were impressed with how much pro uh, progress they had made. And we were impressed with, you know, kind of just the full feature set. So, so I can kind of go into that right now um, because I think, you know, even now um, scale doesn't quite get the recognition that it, it should. Um, so, you know, kind of in essence, they've been managing to combine the best of L1 and L2 technology. Uh, and what that does in turn is it allows us to provide a better user experience, right? Because that is the focal point of everything that we do is we want these users to be sticky to our platform, to scale. Uh, and we want them to, again, fall in love with the experience of DeFi. And, you know, um, maybe, maybe gas fees aren't as high as they previously were in this cycle, but regardless, they are still there on every single other L1, L2, as well as sidechain. And with scale, I mean, you know, <laughs> it simply doesn't exist, right? Transactions are free. Um, so, yes, we've talked about the zero gas transactions. Um, once they pay nothing in gas fees. Uh, this, you know, obviously helps us not only attract users, um, right, for the financial benefit of not paying extra money to transact, uh, but it has the benefit of, you know, kind of helping out with this whole NFT angle that we're taking. Our vision of integrating these NFTs um, and, you know, basically gamifying them into the whole experience, um, it's not possible really on any other chain and the reason that it's not possible is because it costs money to not only mint the nfts but it also costs money to distribute them to users right if we were doing this on mainnet it would be so cost prohibitive uh especially at scale uh, i mean scale with a c um so you know like past a certain critical mass of users like as a project if you're trying to subsidize this you're simply just going to run out of money at some point. Um, and so, you know, this was kind of fundamental to our decision uh, to build on scale because you really can't do, you simply can't do this anywhere else, right? I mean, we're minting NFTs, not only profile NFTs, but also the ones that have a, you know, kind of more intrinsic financial value to them. And we're able to distribute these to all users um, for free. So this obviously huge selling point for us. Uh, the, I think the decentralized storage aspect uh, was super, super interesting. And again, this plays into the NFTs, right? Um, so because our project has that, you know, really important NFT aspect to it, we love the quote unquote decentralized AWS uh, vision that Scale basically laid out and then delivered on. So I think most people maybe don't know this, uh, but NFTs today are stored off chain in servers or at best using IPFS. And things like this can be shut down, 
right? Um, so, you know, Scale's vision is basically you can store any file on the blockchain directly, right? And this is tech that nobody else really has, especially not to this extent um, or, or not quite to this scope. Um, so like for us, for example, we're literally storing all NFT data on chain, then pulling that data into the user's dashboard from the so this, as you can imagine, is, I mean, super groundbreaking stuff. Like nobody else is doing this. Um, another reason that we ended up, you know, kind of making our home on scale uh, is that there's no MEV. There's no front running on scale. So scales basically achieve this through the use of uh, BLS threshold encryption. And so what this means as, um, oh, I'm sorry. At a, at a very simple level is that every single is encrypted prior to being submitted into the mempool. And then at that point, only when the transaction is already confirmed, and keep in mind, it's, it's still encrypted, uh, only when it's confirmed is the transaction decrypted. So the mempool itself is not actually transparent, thereby obviating any possibility of um, you know, kind of these attackers uh, just lurking in the mempool and trying to front run you, trying to sandwich bot you, uh, which for anybody that's you know traded on a dex within the past couple of years uh, has probably had that happen to them, right? So that's pretty cool for us. Um, we thought that that's super novel, uh, and it definitely shows that the scale team is you know kind of really looking ahead to build in all the features that crypto blockchain uh, and, you know, kind of general uh, should have, especially in this day and age. So um, moving on, uh, I think the bridging, right? Uh, Scale has their own 18 second decentralized bridge. And uh, this actually instant transfers between S chains uh, but it also actually allows you to, you know, basically transfer from mainnet to scale or back and forth within the 18 second time frame. Uh, and so this is actually built directly into our front end and it makes it, you know, a seamless user experience. Um, and then, you know, kind of just to sum it up really quickly, uh, you know, fast transaction finality, high throughput and EVM compatibility. Um, so yeah, uh, again, this was kind of a long answer, but like, there's so many good reasons for why we went to scale. I kind of wanted to cover all of them. Yeah, no, I think it was a very nice and thorough answer. Um, you know, I think, uh, you touched on, uh, something earlier as well that I wanted to kind of loop back to, which was, uh, the point about bringing together a lot of, uh, elements such as NFTs and gamification. Uh, we've obviously seen with the rise of NFT platforms like OpenSea, Looks Rare, Magic Eden, and other places that clearly NFTs have been a great uh, entry point for many users into crypto. And we do feel that exchanging and trading is something that is uh, important uh, to be able to tap into uh, uh, you know, this interoperability of uh, all this blockchain tech. So we'd love to maybe share uh, and hear a little bit more from you on uh, all the neat things that you guys are thinking about with regards to NFTs and gamification for the swap. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so, I, I mean, really for us, um, we think that, look, uh, up until now, NFTs, at least this last cycle, um, it's pretty much been hype driven, right? Like there's no real reason or rhyme to why some of these collections or some of these nfts are worth so much and then other ones that may look similar or just um maybe launched at the wrong time or something like that or didn't get the proper hype or influencers behind them aren't worth as much right so like for us nfts definitely are very interesting i mean not only from an artistic perspective um but also just from, uh, I guess, kind of the opportunities that they open up in DeFi. Like earlier, I had mentioned, uh, you know, projects like Avagachi, Charge Particles, Teller Finance. These guys are, you know, really innovating uh, when it comes to, 
you know, kind of pushing the boundaries of what's possible, right? And, and combining these financial instruments in novel ways, linking them with the NFTs, and then having these NFTs kind of inherit these different DeFi, um, I guess, values. Um, so for us, there's at least no real intrinsic value in, in this may be a controversial take uh but we never really saw like a lot of intrinsic value in for example the hottest new ape collection or something like that right and, and even nowadays like if you look at the board ape yacht club i think the floor price is down like a lot um or fidenzas like i think the floor prices are down now right and so this kind of just gives credence to the idea that you know, these pure speculative, speculative uh, art NFTs, they don't necessarily have intrinsic value. Some of them might stand the test of time, uh, CryptoPunks, for example, just because of the historical value. But other than that, I mean, they are mainly hype driven. So what we're doing uh, with the gamification or the financialization of these NFTs is we're building in DeFi utility directly into the nft itself um we will have reward gems that you know are able to confer these benefits for example like a zero trading fee nft uh let's say our trading fee is 0.3 percent on swaps on the xyk side if a user happens to have a zero trading fee nft that's very easy to measure the economic value or the financial value of because that's literally just your annual trading volume times 0.03%, right? Um, APY boost NFTs are also very easy to measure. If you have a plus 10% APY boost and you're farming in a pool that's giving you 20%, well, now you're getting 10% more. So you're earning 30%. These things are easy to measure. And um, I, I think it just, I, I think this is the next, kind of natural evolution of where nfts are going and we're starting to see that happen but it's happening really slowly so we're trying to push that a bit <laughs> and we're trying to make it happen faster yeah awesome so i think uh you've already covered uh almost everything that that i wanted to ask about um i think probably the the best thing that maybe i'll i'll let you have a couple more minutes to share about any of the kind of upcoming milestones or things that you're thinking about uh, with regards to Ruby? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think all users right now um, should be looking forward to our launch. Uh, so we will be launching before the end of the public sale that uh, we're currently you know, partnered with you guys on. Um, so we will be launching with the product first, uh, just without the Ruby token, obviously. On launch, uh, we will have, you know, the fully functioning dual dex model, uh, which is the XYK plus stable swap, as well as fee rebate gems. Uh, we will have full trading functionality, which includes staking, farming, uh, as well as new NFTs. Uh, and these will be unlocked after the sale. Um, and this is necessary because the Ruby token won't be live until that time. But you know, down the line, um, I think users can expect more innovation when it comes to uh, not only the existing NFT kind of stat models, uh, but also just more NFTs in general, different NFTs, things that things that provide different types of value on top of just fee rebates or maybe zero trading fees, uh, things like copy trading identifiers or referral linking like you would see on something like by any of these other centralized exchanges, right? These NFTs um, that are in your wallet, they actually open up a whole world of possibilities that really, to be quite honest, we're just trying to, uh, you know, kind of push on and expound upon. Um, so yeah, I, I think really at this point, um, the sky is wide open for experimentation. Uh, we know what we want to do, but we're also very interested in what the community wants. And so we encourage everybody to get involved and, you know, kind of voice their opinion because I mean, we, we can do anything on scale. Awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, that kind of covers, I think almost everything I wanted to, to ask about, you know, I think that 
this NFT uh, uh, kind of use cases for these different gems that will give users uh, these fee rebates and all that stuff is super interesting. Uh, let us know if uh, you want to do some impossible uh, whitelist campaigns later on, as we do now cover uh, NFT drops as well. Um, so maybe that will be something we can chat about uh, later as well. Um, but our users have already been really excited about NFTs on many chains so far. And I think it's a great sign that you guys have already uh, you know, taken the time to think about ways to utilize uh, real Web3 tech to engage users in lots of great ways. Um, for any of the users that haven't had a chance yet to stake into the Impossible Finance Launchpad that's going on right now for Ruby Exchange, you can hop over to invest.impossible.finance and you'll find all the information about Ruby uh, coming soon. So can't wait to uh, have more users uh, hop over and try your guys' product uh, when you guys are ready. Um, I think uh, we will be able to try a lot more things uh, in the scale ecosystem uh, once you guys have the product ready. So I can't wait uh, to, to dive deeper myself and I'm sure the rest of the Impossible community uh, is as well. So without further ado, I think uh, thanks Dolomite for all of your time uh, here today. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you around the Impossible community. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time, Calvin. Glad to be a part of this. Cheers. Cheers.